Welcome back. This video is actually the second in a series of Git videos that I'm doing for this channel. If you haven't already seen the first one, I'd recommend watching that beforehand in order to fully understand the topic that we're talking about. Let's go. Git! <laughs> I'm gonna have to start all of these videos like that now. As I said in the first video, Git is the industry standard version control system. If you're a developer, you need to know it. Last episode, we started at the most basic Git commands. This video, we're gonna continue that learning and take it one step further. I'm gonna look at one of Git's most important features, and that's branching. Let's do this. Hi there folks, my name is Ben and welcome back to the channel. As usual, a very quick reminder that if you like what I do on this channel and you wanna see more of what I do, please hit that subscribe button. And of course, if you wanna get notifications when new videos come out, make sure you hit that bell icon too. Right, onto branching. Branching is one of the most important features of Git. It lets you do all sorts of changes, experimentations, maybe even brand new features in a very safe, isolated space away from your main code base. So that if something goes wrong, your main code isn't affected. When you're in Git, you are always in a branch. This is really important information. You are always looking at a branch. By default, the branch that Git starts you in is the master branch. So Git branch, you can see the master branch is the one I'm in. Okay, that's by default. However, we can make new branches to sort of isolate a nice safe bit of space away from the master branch, from where the main code is sort of kept, depending on your branching strategy, and make changes without affecting that code over there. So what happens when you branch? At a very high level, you can imagine it like this. You have a project and it is in a certain state, certain changes have happened, it exists like this, maybe you've got three files, so on, right? When you branch, Git sort of, it doesn't actually, but it sort of takes a complete duplication of the current state of how your project is now and separates it and creates these sort of complete isolated areas that you can work in safely. So I could work in here, in this copy, in this duplication of the code base over here without it affecting this one over here. That's the idea. It's not exactly the sort of technical explanation of branching. That's a little bit more complicated and we'll cover that probably in a future video. However, if you just imagine it as though Git takes a snapshot of the current state of your project and the sort of commit that you're in at the moment and duplicates it and creates an extra safe area for you to mess around in. And this branch will of course have a name and it will not be master. Master is the branch that it will have taken that snapshot, that duplication from. If I haven't made it especially clear, then please direct your attention to the image in the bottom right of this slide here. People like to visualize their Git histories using these sort of circles that represent commits and one commit follows another, follows another. And the sort of history, the timeline of your repository is built using these circles. You can see in this picture, the blue circles are the master branch, if you like, the master um, timeline. And you can see at one point, it branched off, and that's why it's called branching, because it's sort of like a tree, it branches off. It takes a duplication, it branches off, and this green um, branch was created, the feature branch, for example. The two branches are completely independent from one another. However, later on down the line, you can choose to merge the two branches together to bring those changes and those histories back together. But we'll talk about merging in another video. So let's head over to the terminal. The first new command I wanna show you is the git branch command. If you just type git space branch and hit enter, it will show you a list of your branches that are on your local machine. And it'll put a little star, a little asterisk, next to the branch that you're currently in. So this is telling me that I'm in the master branch currently. I can also use the git status command to see what branch I'm on. It says on branch master, just in case. But I prefer to use the git branch and the little asterisk visualization. So now I'm gonna make a new branch from the master branch. Let's just remember what commits we have in our history. We have two commits, okay? I'm gonna use now the git branch command, but I'm gonna add an extra string at the end. If I leave git branch blank, then it will show me the branches I've got. If I do git branch with a string, it will create a branch with that name. So I'm gonna create a branch called test, okay? Nothing seems to have really happened, but it has worked. If I now do git branch again, but without the string at the end to see my branches, we can see 
that there is a master branch and there is a test branch. When you create a branch, it doesn't automatically sort of point you to that branch. It doesn't automatically show you the branch or move you into it or make you look at it. As you can tell, I'm still looking and pointing at master because the asterisk is next to it. If I want to now move into that new branch I've created, there's another command, git checkout followed by the name of the branch. In this case, I want to move to test. So I'm going to go to test and hit enter. I have some extra scripts that I've written that run on my machine when I switch branches. So you won't see all of this output, but you might see some of it. If I just clear the screen now and do git branch again to just see my branches, you can see there is a master branch, there is a test branch, but now the asterisk has moved. I'm now in, I'm now looking at the test branch, if you like. And if we do git log whilst we're in the test branch, you can see it has just created a snapshot of the branch we we're in before. So it's taken a snapshot of all of the commits that are in master, bang, duplicated it, sort of. We'll talk a bit more complicated and technical in a future video. I can go back to master by using that checkout command again and the name of the branch master to go back to it and then use git branch to see the asterisk now has again moved. If I want to delete a branch on my machine, I can do the git branch command followed by minus D flag and the name of the branch. So minus D test. And it says deleted branch test. So if we do git branch now, we can just see master. A lot of people get annoyed that when they create a branch, git doesn't automatically move them into it. So there's another little trick I wanna show you right now, which is creating a branch and immediately moving into it. And you can do this by using the git checkout command followed by the minus B flag and then the name of the branch that you're creating and it will create it and move you into it. So let's call this branch um, other. So git checkout minus B other, hit enter. Okay, and I'm gonna use git branch now just to view that there is a master branch, there is an other branch and I'm asterisked in the other branch. So I'm looking at the other branch right now. Right, let's show off some of the power of branching. I'm in the other branch. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna show you that there's only one file in there at the moment, the notes.txt. I'm going to create um, a new file called abc.txt. I'm terrible with names, I'm sorry. I'm gonna create this file and I'm gonna to add to it, this is a new file. I'm gonna save and close. And now I'm gonna go and use my old commands, which is git status to see that I have an untracked file. I've made a change and this file is untracked in my system. So I'm gonna do git add dot again, because I'm lazy. You could just put the file name there, but I'm lazy dot means all the changes. And then I'm gonna do git status again, always do git status as often as you can. And you can see now there are changes to be committed. The abc.txt is in the cookie basket. It's in the staging area, ready to be committed. So the final piece of the puzzle is git commit with a message. Um, here is a other commit, okay? And hit enter and the commit has happened. I'm gonna clear the screen. I'm gonna use git log now to show you that there are three commits now in this branch. And also I'm gonna show you the branch that we're in just for clarity. So we're in the other branch and we've made a new commit, okay? The newest commit is at the top. Now, watch what happens when I check out back to master. So I'm gonna clear the screen. I'm gonna git check out master, okay? I'm gonna just clear the screen quickly and I'm gonna prove that I'm on master, git branch. And now you can see the asterisk is on master. I'm gonna do git log and look what's happened. We only have two commits. We've only got two commits in the master branch. This is where the real power of branching comes in, okay? If I ls this folder now, abc.txt is not here. It's not here, it's not part of this branch. It's not part of master. But do not worry, it's not gone. If I git checkout back to other, I'm just gonna clear the screen, and I ls in here, look who's back, abc.txt. And if I just cat it out, if I just output the, the, the contents of the file, this is a new file. The contents is still there as well. It's, it's all good, it's all there. And of course, git log to show you that the third commit is there as well. So hopefully now you can see the incredible power that branching gives you. So hopefully now you can see the incredible power that branching gives you. Git sort of creates an isolated space, an isolated duplication of the code in its current state, the moment that you branch from it, and you can do whatever you like in there. You can do new commits, new ads, new files, all sorts of stuff you can delete, you can add, you can modify. And the master branch or your main code base is unaffected. Let's just take it one last step further to make sure we really understand the power of branching. 
I'm in the other branch now, and in this folder, I have the ABC text and the notes.txt file. I'm gonna just edit the notes.txt file, and right at the bottom, I'm gonna add, this is a brand new line in the other, other branch. I'm gonna save it, and I'm gonna quit. Now, I'm just gonna do git status. Always do git status to see what's going on. I've modified the notes.txt file, so I'm gonna git add dot, so git add all the changes to my cookie basket. I'm gonna git commit with a message, and I'm gonna just do a rubbish message. In fact, I'm gonna write the word rubbish as my commit message. So a new commit has happened. I'm gonna clear the screen and do git log. And you can see now there's a fourth commit, the rubbish commit, where I changed the notes.txt file. Maybe you've already guessed where I'm going with this, but I'm gonna show you now if I do git branch, just to show you the branch I'm on is other, I'm gonna do git checkout master. I'm gonna go back to the master branch and I'm gonna clear the screen, I'm gonna ls. We still have that notes.txt file because that was originally there. However, if I um, go into the notes.txt file, there's one line that's missing and it's that fourth line that we just added at the bottom of the file. One final small interesting thing to the git branch command. If I'm on the branch other and I want it to change the name of the branch, git branch command can do that. If you do git branch followed by the minus m flag and give it a new string, git will rename that branch for you. So if I didn't want it to be called other and wanted it to be called um, feature, then git branch minus m feature, hit enter and do git branch again. And you can see um, I'm still on the other branch, but it's now not called other anymore, it's called feature. So that has been a whirlwind stop tour to all things branching in Git. Again, just the basics at this point. Nothing has left my machine still. We're just using branching inside of our Git repository to create isolated spaces that we can work on without affecting the other spaces. Again, thank you so much for tuning into this channel and watching this video. This, of course, is the second video in a Git mini-series, so keep your eyes open on this channel for future videos in this series. If you want to be notified of any of those videos that come out as they come out, then make sure you hit that bell icon along with the subscribe button to make sure that you're notified when a new video is released. Of course, if you have any questions at all, please reach out to me at my Twitter handle, at Ben underscore Cadell. Thank you for watching. See you in the next video. We then made some... <sighs> Got a piece of... I hope it's still recording. These things. That's the second one in this video.